At the beginning of the pandemic, I did an episode about sharing parenting with your ex while the world was in lockdown during COVID-19. When I did that episode, the family courts had not yet rendered decisions about parenting during the pandemic. Since that time, the courts have found many instances of children being deprived of contact with their parents as being urgent, and there have been many court orders. The court decisions have all been consistent with the guidelines of that podcast. This updating episode will go over the guidance that the courts have provided about specific issues. I'm John Schumann, a certified specialist in family law in Ontario. I'm also a mediator, arbitrator, and collaborative lawyer. This podcast is a companion to my book, Guide to the Basics of Ontario Family Law, which is available on the iBookstore, Amazon, and in fine bookstores. Every family court judge who has faced making a decision about parenting has commented about how the pandemic represents extraordinary times. It is an event that is having a profound impact on children, even children who are not in the midst of parenting conflict. Justice Meeky noted that even young children will carry the residual emotions into adulthood, at which time those children will reflect back on whether their parents eased their fear and disruption, or whether their parents were focused on their own needs. How parents act during this difficult time not only sets an example for their children, but can affect their children's development. It has never been more important to put children's needs first and do what is ever necessary to avoid conflict. Family court judges have made it clear that when the courts finally reopen, they will place a lot of weight in how parents behave during the pandemic and hold parents responsible for bad behavior. In a recent decision, Justice Pazarats was blunt. Now, more than ever, parents need parents to be mature and cooperative and mutually respectful. In these times of unspeakable stress and anxiety, children need emotional reassurance from both parents that everything is going to be okay. How parents conduct themselves during this time of crisis will speak volumes about parenting insight and trustworthiness. Your reputation will outlast COVID-19, so please don't try to take advantage of the current situation. In the long run, self-help will turn out to be a big mistake. Family court judges have also made it clear that it is necessary for children to have relationships with both parents during the pandemic. Other judges have been quoting Justice Pazarat's decision early in the pandemic, in which his honor said, In troubling and disorienting times, children need the love, guidance, and emotional support of both parents, now more than ever. Judges have specifically held that seeing both parents is in children's best interests. It is essential, and so travel between parents' homes is essential. They expect parents to find ways for children to move between homes and spend time with both parents in a safe way. Only actual evidence, not speculation, that a parent is putting children at actual risk of harm will cause a judge to restrict parenting. Judges have been shooting down attempts by parents to cut off their children's contact with the other parent because the parent works in healthcare or on the front line. This is something I find personally offensive because, in addition to working as a lawyer during the pandemic, I returned to my first career and I've been working as a paramedic. Frontline workers know that to defeat this virus, it is critical that they not get it. That is because if frontline workers get it, they will pass it around to the other people they are helping. The heroism of frontline workers is in their consistent, constant donning and redonning of layers and layers of PPE to make sure that they do not get the virus and pass it on to other people. Because they know that to stop the pandemic of everyone right now, it is most critical that our healthcare workers and frontline workers not get sick. Judges have noted that frontline workers have training in the proper use of PPE and knowledge of why it is important to use it. Their employers are obligated to give them the necessary protection and make sure that they use it. Well, nobody is watching over other people to make sure that while they're staying at home, they are doing the critical things like hand washing and keeping apart. So Ontario Family Court judges have held that unless there is actual evidence that a frontline worker is ignoring their training and not using PPE properly, there is no reason why their children are not safe with them. However, judges do want to avoid kids being around people who are not following public health warnings and who are not doing what is necessary to stay safe where parents are actually disregarding public health recommendations and are unnecessarily exposing children to the chance of catching the virus, the courts have intervened. However, judges do want to see actual evidence of actions that will put children at risk of actual harm, not just speculation about whether something could be risky. But parents who are putting their children at risk may find a judge stops them from having in-person contact with their kids.
It is only where a parent poses an actual risk that judges have found that video conference access, such as over FaceTime, Skype, or Google Meets, is sufficient. But absent exceptional circumstances, kids should have in-person contact with both parents. They should be in the physical care of and be parented by both parents during the pandemic. Calling up a child from a parent can add even more stress and cause more harm during the pandemic. Again, the stress of parental conflict is not something kids need when they are already stressed about the pandemic. Judges also expect parents to cooperate or to work out parenting matters during the pandemic. This means making the necessary changes to keep the children safe while seeing both parents. Keeping in mind it is best for kids to spend time with each parent, but public transit and places with lots of people around should be avoided for now. One or both parents may have to make some changes to their routine or some sacrifices to facilitate children spending time with both parents. That may mean agreeing to adjust the schedule, change where exchanges happen, or how much driving is required. It may mean a parent has to do more schoolwork with a child than is usual to maintain a schedule and a routine. It may mean changing the activities or even changing a work schedule. It may mean that parents have to sacrifice so that their children can be benefit. But that is what judges expect. COVID-19 does not in itself justify breaching court orders. Absent proof of a parent putting a child at risk, both parents have to do what is necessary to make the parenting arrangements work or to make them even better for the kids. If you need some more information about parenting after separation, or general family law guidance, or if you need to understand Ontario family law matters better so you can make better decisions, get a copy of my book, Guide to the Basics of Ontario Family Law. You can access it on the iBook Store on Amazon for the Kindle version, or you can download it for Kobo. Amazon can deliver the paperback version directly to your doorstep. You can also get a lot more Ontario Family Law information on www.schumanlaw.ca. Not only there are hundreds of pages of Family Law information and links, but there are links where to get my book and links to reach my office to meet with either me or one of my colleagues. Because it's always best to get a lawyer who can give you expert advice that's specific to your situation. In addition to my website, keep up to date on family and children's law issues by liking my Facebook page, following me on Twitter at at Law, and finding me on LinkedIn. Of course, please also subscribe to my YouTube channel and get the audio versions of the Ontario Family Law Podcast on iTunes, on SoundCloud, or at www.schumanlaw.ca. Thanks for participating in this podcast. Stay safe. We will get together again soon.